Okay, here we have the Mercedes 722.6 five-speed automatic transmission. This is a, a unit that was introduced there in about 1996 and was actually <clears throat> used on a variety of vehicles. Now this transmission itself is uh, bolts up to the Chrysler's V8 engine. This is actually from a Chrysler 300. Now remember that back in uh, about 2000, the 2007, 8, 9, 10 model year that Chrysler belonged to Daimler Benz. Now what we've done is uh, we carefully inspected the pump, excellent condition. We've replaced the seal and packed the pump with the assembly lube and a little transmission fluid. We of course replaced the O-ring around the pump housing. Here we have removed and inspected this first brakes piston and what I used to do that was this tool kit right here and uh, it works very nicely. Now this is this uh, from this company right here I actually bought it on eBay it was reasonably priced it's the 722.6 and it actually worked very nicely. I was impressed with it. In other words, I didn't have to go over and use my snap press or the uh, foot press or the arbor press. I was able to do on the bench without any problem to remove, compress the belvedere spring and remove the L-type snap ring without any problem whatsoever. So now we're continuing to go together. Now with the 7226 transmission, you have to be sensitive because they have different tooth counts there in the planetary gear train, and they'll actually have a different number of planetaries depending upon the uh, suspected, you know, torque input to the transmission application. Now, this is a very high torque input because it's a performance V8, so this is going to have the uh, beefed up planetary set for this application. Okay, here we see our Toledo kit that we purchased through Wit Transmission Parts. It's whatever it takes. One thing I like about this is this is a paper rubber kit and all of the seals are carefully sorted and put in individual plastic bags. Everything that you need to rebuild the transmission or to go into the valve body is right here. And, of course, obviously, with the 7.22.6, we always replace the filter. One thing about this transmission is it uses a fiber-style filter. And it's easy for this filter to become blocked. It does not take much material at all. Now, once I start to throttle the intake of the hydraulic pump, the pressure that it can develop is sacrificed. The transmission then starts slipping develops more material, and of course, vicious cycle continues to restrict the filter until we get to the point where the vehicle won't move. Now, one thing nice about this filter, it protects the gear type pump and the valve body and critical components of the transmission from debris. So even though I'll burn up a clutch or uh, the vehicle won't move here, I've done very little damage to the transmission itself. And one thing on the uh, 722.6 is that the electrical connector there for the lead frame comes in through the case and it's a source of a leak. So it, this doesn't cost very much. We usually always replace that. Now on this Chrysler application, the crankshaft position sensor for the engine goes through the bell housing of the transmission and it sometimes gets broken. So of course we have a brand new one. It doesn't cost very much, and uh, it'll be part of the rebuild there to make sure we don't have any problems there in the future. All right, so now what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and do the K1 drum, and here is my seal. So we'll go ahead and take this and open the package and just go right over to the washed and disassembled drum. Go ahead and install the seals. Use a little of the assembly lube and put her right together. Okay, here are the old seals, and here we have the new seals. Now, as we look at this style seal, 
we have what is called a D type seal. As you can see, I have the flat edge goes there on the inner member, and the smooth edge is there towards the outer member. And here, this is going to and be installed in a groove right here in the piston housing. And of course, you want to be careful. Don't don't overstress the uh, don't overstress the seal. So we just simply slide it down. Okay, here I'm just using a seal tool right here to just carefully guide the seal down into its groove. Now that first groove is actually for the retaining ring for the return spring, so I'm actually after the second groove down here. And we don't want to overstress the seal, so we just kind of bring it down and slip it up into the slot. No problem. Goes right in without any trouble. And we're going to go ahead and put a little assembly lube on it there. Be careful not to damage it. Okay, now we've got our first rubber seal in position without any trouble. Now for the next one, this is just a conventional O-ring. Now, this piston is actually the return piston, and what happens with these uh, certain clutches that actually spin in operation, I have troubles with centrifugal force being applied to any fluid that would be trapped within the apply section of the piston. So what happens is on the release section, I have another cavity. So what happens is I have centrifugal force actually working on that fluid, and usually that cavity is connected to the lube circuit. So it will always have a low-pressure fluid filling it all the time. So there, the spinning clutch will have centrifugal force acting upon the lubrication fluid within the release cavity. Well, there, push against the apply piston and keep it in the release position, even if the drum is spinning at high speed. All right, and now for our last seal, this is the apply piston. The internal seal is there, part of the piston housing, and then here's the piston seal. It's a D-type seal. There it is, no problem. What we like to use is the, I particularly like to use the light tack blue assembly goo. They do have a green that's much stiffer, much thicker. But I find that the blue is satisfactory for all operations that we normally do. So, on the Mercedes unit, this 722.6, I really don't have any troubles because they have nice beveled edges that, uh, allow the seal to slip down into position without any problem. So it's really not a fight at all to put the piston down in the housing. It's just not, not a problem. And just a little bit of the assembly lubrication. So when I take the piston, I got my new seals, just simply just position it and it just falls right into position and you should be able to turn it without any trouble if for any reason that you were to roll a seal then it would have a tendency to fight you there as you try to turn the piston by hand all right now what we can do is that uh, we'll go ahead and finish our assembly here here we're going to take our diaphragm spring now oftentimes you hear this called a Bellevue spring, and that's named after the company here in America that developed this type of dish type spring. And obviously in Germany, they have a different company. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and install the release piston. I'll put just a, a little bit of the assembly lube. Now, What's going to happen is this is going to bear against the apply piston, and there I can see the witness mark, so I can see where the spring had been in the past, and it's going to come down and put 
bear against the release piston or the portion that's going to be retained by the snap ring and what I'm going to do here is just carefully push this down into position no problem now I need to compress this all right so here is the snap ring in order for the snap ring to go into its groove I've got to compress the spring push down on the piston and I have a special tool to do that So we'll go ahead and try this special tool and see how it works for us. Now, one thing that I can see already is I would have to thread this forever to get it down. Let's see if I can use this as a spacer. It's the only reason why I'm doing this, otherwise I'd have to keep turning and turning and turning and turning. Okay, here we're using our new special tool. And uh, what I've done is I've just simply stacked this up underneath. And that's just so that I don't have to keep threading the rod a long distance. But here I'm able to disassemble and reassemble the transmission without using my snap press or my arbor press so I'm just just very gently compressing the diaphragm spring working very nicely no problem and then here we see the snap ring just gently push it down into the uh, into its groove Okay, here I'm using my balm special tool. Now, it's really a whole lot easier to use the foot press or to use the arbor press, but the thing is, a lot of people don't have a foot press or arbor press, and they want to rebuild this transmission, and they need a way to compress the different clutch packs. So this actually works very, very nicely. And of course, when I'm putting this together, I just simply stack this up and the only reason why is so I don't have a long way to go with the threaded bolt. So here, doesn't take much. And here we go. Okay, I've assembled it without any problem snap ring is nicely in position. The actual sprag clutch is in excellent condition and now we'll go ahead and load our clutch pack. Okay now on Mercedes they like to use this uh, cushion plate there that goes down against the piston and you want to pay attention that uh, sometimes it's a little hard to determine but this is shaped like a dish and you want the bottom of the dish to go down against the piston. Now, if there's ever a question when you've taken apart a transmission, oftentimes there's what we call witness marks. A witness mark is where it's been making contact there with the piston. And you can see I have a clear witness mark. So this is the side that went down against the piston. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start stacking up my plates. Now, one thing that's become popular is uh, the single-sided plate, where I have a steel on one side and friction on the other. Mercedes is uh, using this, and several other manufacturers have uh, gone this way. I say that there are certainly some advantages, maybe some disadvantages. This is the one that was originally going against the dish plate. And we're inspecting the clutches carefully and alternating in internal, external spline. Now when installing the new plates, 
if you are using a new plate and if we were putting a banner kit in they'd be brand new plates this transmission is not getting a banner kit just the paper rubber and these clutches are in excellent condition there's uh, some schools of thought here when installing new clutches Ray Bustus Many of their clutch kits come pre-soaked. So there's no reason to soak the plates in transmission fluid. One thing that's critical when you're assembling a transmission, especially with new plates, is you want to be sensitive to the clearance there. It's achieved when I have completed the plate stack and I put the backing plate on. And sometimes if it's wet with fluid, it's a little hard to get a good indication. Obviously, if I put the plates in dry, it uh, will only take a few moments for them to become saturated with transmission fluid. As the engine starts and the lube circuit is fed, it will uh, dampen up our clutches rather quickly. Now, as far as this backing plate is concerned, I can clearly see from the witness mark that this side had gone against the clutch and this side was retained by the snap ring. And it seems like it can be in either direction. I've taken the Mercedes units apart and it can be in either direction. However, you'll notice in the manufacturing process when they stamp this out, there's a curve section right here. And is that an advantage or disadvantage there bearing against the snap ring? And again, I can kind of look at the witness mark to get an idea of what the original orientation was. And as you can see, not much involved there putting it together. Feels good. Now what I'm doing is, it just so happens I only have one passage right here, so I can go ahead and hit it with air, and we'll just kind of see how that applies. No problem. And of course we can also check it there on the pump, which we'll do that right now.